Hello Crossroads, so good to be with you again today. We are in the study of our study of the book of Acts and today we're in chapter 4. I'm going to pick up towards the end of the book so if you have your Bible or you're taking notes or maybe you're listening to me while you wash dishes that's just as effective too but if you have your Bible it's Acts chapter 4 and we're going to start towards the end uh, with verse 32. Let's jump right in. Verse 32. Bible says this, all of the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. That's actually uh, a little funny to me. Sometimes I try to read the Bible with a little bit of humor and um, uh, I don't know, I guess that's just my personality, but when I read that, I actually think of little children. I mean, how many moms and dads or aunts and uncles are out there, you know, what is a child's first word? It's not usually daddy or mommy, which would be preferable. It's usually mine, or at least like top three first words. And we learn that so little where what we have is mine and I'm gonna keep it and, and I'm gonna hold it and don't try and take it. So when I read that portion of scripture, I actually think about children and how our natural tendency is to hold on to everything that we have and keep it. Well, here in the Bible, as the church was being built, it says nobody claimed that any of his possessions were his own. I mean, basically it was just like, what's mine is yours, what yours is mine, mi casa es su casa. That's what was going on and it's a phenomenal time of growth. I mean, the, the church was starting and, and was being built on this type of foundation. Let's keep reading. Verse 33, with great power, the apostles continued to testify the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and much grace was given upon them all. There was no needy persons among them. <clears throat> For from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. We're gonna pause there for a minute. Just like last week, this is a portion of scripture that really challenges me. Because when I, when I think about this not mine mentality and this very free giving mentality, it's very uh, challenging to me as I look around my own home, you know, and, and I gotta be honest with you, I think, Lord, does that mean that, that you want me to sell my house and, and, and take the profit and, and bring it to the church? Or, you know, do you want me, do you, do you want me to take this, this selfless, I mean, the epitome of selfless approach that we see here displayed in the Bible, it at the very least challenges me and I hope that it challenges you. Um, so we see that this church was being built, people were, were giving and others as they had needs, they were, they were receiving and nobody was needy among them. That's just incredible. And I know that even today in the present situation that we're in, there's so many of you who can say, I relate to that. You know, I'm, I'm giving baskets of food to my neighbor. I'm taking my kids and I'm, I'm drawing sidewalk art and that's encouraging you know, anybody who walks by. I'm, I'm going to the store for somebody who can't go to the store. I'm making phone calls. Whatever it is that you're doing, you're giving all that you have uh, to help those around you. And, and I applaud you in that. But what this passage of scripture also does, and we'll just take a quick minute and think about this. I see the what. I see the need, I see what they were doing. But when I read this, I ask the question, why? And when I ask the question why, it makes me think about 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And for those of you who are listening, who are new to church and new to this whole Bible thing, maybe you've never even read the Bible, and that's super cool that you're here listening. We welcome you and we're glad that you're here. But if, even if that's you and, and you have no understanding of the Bible, I promise you that if you've been to a wedding, at the very least, you've heard this chapter that I'm gonna reference because it's known as the love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient, love is kind. You know it, it doesn't envy, it doesn't boast. But before it gets to what love is, the first portion talks about what love isn't. 
Specifically in verse 3, listen to what he says. He says, If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. There's the why. There's a lot of what that we could talk about. But here's the why. Why were the apostles doing this? Why were the believers doing this? And why should you and I be willing to give whatever it is that Christ asks of us to one another? Why? Because we do it in love. We love because He first loved us. We're willing to give to one another. We're willing to sacrifice. We're willing to go without because Jesus first loved us. And because of that love that he showed to us, we're able to take that love and show it to everybody else around us. What an incredible thing. So Crossroads today, this weekend, and the days to come, as you're doing the what, ask yourself the question, why? Make sure that your heart is in check. Make sure that you're doing it out, an, out of an attitude of love and selflessness and humility. And I promise you, it will amount to much. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that we can dive into your word and, and you speak truth to us, Lord. Father, we are so undeserving, but yet we are so grateful. We give it all to you in Jesus' name. Come on, and the church said, amen. We'll see you later.